What is up family? It's the Budget Bass Head. Welcome back to the channel. Right now what we're going to be doing over here is counting acoustic orders. We're going to be continuing the series of that. Right now what I want to do is reflect back a little bit on what we talked about in the previous video. In the previous video, so this guy right here is pretty much what sparked the whole conversation or I should say that it is the centerpiece of all of the explanations that I'm going to give you because anytime you see the driver itself, just know in your mind that the driver is always second order, okay? Moving on, we're going to look at something else that some people may not have even heard of, which is a second acoustic order. Again. What most people would call this, if you get an aerial view of this, this is known more so as an infinite baffle setup, okay? This is what you have. You have no walls, no floors. This is pretty much the rear wave of a, of a subwoofer or speaker being allowed to blast off into infinity and the same with the front wave being able or allowed to blast off into infinity and never even have to interact with the real wave at all. They never interact with one another. And if you wanna see the schematics of this, all you have to do is check this out. This is the infinite baffle setup that we just got through talking about. And this is the front wave firing into infinity and the real wave doing the same. They never interact with one another. You never create a structure which these two are contained and forced to interact with one another. Hence, this just being a two order, second, uh, second order setup. And I know that some people will say, yo, well, if this is a second order setup, you already said that the driver itself was a second order setup, but you did put this structure in between. So why is this not considered like an additional order or something because you do have this structure? Well, you have to keep in mind what can't be said. Can't be said that you gotta you gotta count energy storing components. In this case, you have no energy storing components. The only thing that you did here was that you just extended the baffle of this thing. That's it. So this would be no different from you putting this in like, say if you built a wall in your vehicle and you put a single sub in there or you put multiple subs in there, but you don't vent it. There is no vent. This is just blasting off into the trunk and this is blasting off into the cabin. This would be an infinite baffle setup. Pretty much what you get whenever you have six by nines in your rear deck. It's the same thing. Or if you were to take subwoofers and mount it into your attic and have it blasting down into your listening area, whether that be a, a dedicated listening room or your living room or bedroom, this still would be infinite baffle setup and it still would be rear and front wave not being able to interact with one another. Okay, moving on. So that would be considered a second acoustic order or what I call a second acoustic order. So if you was to come over here, there actually is another very famous second acoustic order, I mean a second acoustic, uh, second order enclosure that most people use all the time, but it is never called a second order enclosure. And that, <clears throat> that being the classical sealed enclosure. So I already know what some people are going to say. If this is second order and this is an energy storing component, why is the energy storing component not being counted as an additional order? Well, all you have to do is just check this out. The real wave here still is not being able to or allowed to interact with the front wave hence making this second order. This is not much different from what you just seen in the infinite baffle setup, okay? Keep in mind that we already constituted, I mean, we already gave an example of the infinite baffle setup of, you know, the, the uh, subwoofer or speaker being placed in, a, in, the, in the attic, firing down into a listening room or with the uh, trunk of a car being where the rear wave is trapped right think about it where the rear wave is trapped into the trunk or a wall with no vents right or a wall bill with no vents 
it's the same setup. This is a second order enclosure. It is no different from that. And let's just look at the uh, graph of this. What you have here is a front wave blasting off into infinity and theoretically the, uh, the rear wave doing the same. This is a second order setup. Okay, so let's move on. All right, I'm not going to move on. What I'm going to do is stroke because I only gave an example of one side of the camp, which is those who talk about energy storing components. So what about the, the, the side of the camp that count the, uh, the natural roll off of an enclosure? Well, a second order is constituted by a 12 dB per octave roll off. So what do I mean by that? A drive, the driver itself is always two orders, and because it is a piston that has mass, <clears throat> the enclosure in the case of a sealed box is what it's really doing is just acts like a stiffening agent for the spring property of the subwoofer or speaker, you know, hence still making it a second order. It does nothing uh, to affect the roll off of it. The infinite baffle and a sealed enclosure pretty much have the same uh, characteristics in that regard. Okay, so just know that not much changes from a sealed enclosure and any other type of enclosure. I already know that some of you guys are going to be like, you know, that's a lie. I can tell the differences, whatever, whatever, whatever. But when you look at the math and you look at the physical, the uh, if you look at the math behind it, and you look at what the camp A is saying as far as like a second order being constituted as 12 dB per octave roll off, then you will see why this right here constitute this as being a second order. It pretty much is what it is. I know some guys are gonna have some issues with me explaining it this way, but please leave them in the comment sections below. That is the purpose of the video, to learn together, okay? So we're going to be moving forward and we're going to be talking about third order enclosures and to not make this too long and drawn out. This is where I'm going to cut this piece off because I want you guys to actually be able to compare something like what is the difference between the second order and the third order enclosures? Okay. Have you even heard of a third order enclosures? Of course you have. It just wasn't called a third order enclosures. What most people, what most of you guys would, would recognize this as being is a transmission line design, which in theory, or by all means, to be honest with you, is a third order enclosure. So what constitute this for being a third order enclosure? Well, let's look at it. You have the driver itself being second order always and then you got this long line right here which is in itself this one line in itself is an additional energy storing component keep in mind this is not a loading chamber for this this well is loaded in the line the line itself is not attached to a loading chamber sometimes you would see uh, labyrinth designs. Some people sometimes get confused with uh, transmission designs. A labyrinth design and a transmission line design is not the same thing. Anytime you have a loading chamber, that is eh, not really considered a transmission line design. However, you do have what is considered a tapered transmission line design. Okay, we're going to get to that later. But for right now, just know that this real wave here is being channeled out of the line here and allowed to interact with the front wave. So if you was to look at this in a graph, you would have the front wave and you would have this rear, this, this loading. You see where this is loaded? This is loaded within this line. This is not encased in anything and being ported. This is just a long line in which the real wave is allowed to travel and eventually exit and interact with the front wave. Okay? So this is not infinite baffle. That's not what this is. This is infinite baffle do not interfere with the natural order of the wave. It does not. But this thing is being channeled through this 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 uh this uh this line right here which makes this 
an energy storing component now. Okay? An energy storing component. So this is second order, the driver itself, and the line is, is, uh, is considered an additional third order. I mean, additional order, which makes it a third order. Another third order component you guys probably are familiar with, but it's never called a third order enclosure, is the tapered horn. This, in um, to be more specific, is a real loaded tapered horn. All right, let me get to it. So I already know some people are going, some people are already at the keyboards ready to type. All right, so check this out. Remember that a sealed enclosure is still second order. I know you guys are looking at this and you're like, okay, but just keep in mind when we talked about the sealed enclosure, sealed enclosures are second order. This real wave is being encased here and is not being allowed to interact with the front wave. Okay, if you guys look at this, this is not an acoustic chamber. This is not a loading chamber. Okay, what you're looking at here is a line or a horn. And that's different. A horn in all aspects, to me, a horn is a line. It's a, it's, it's, it is a line. So you say transmission line, and a lot of people look at that T line. But when you're looking at this guy right here, you don't really think line. But if you were to look at how like uh, horn instruments in a band are constructed, you would kind of see exactly what's going on here. That is one continuous line that is smaller at one point than it is the other. That's all that you're dealing with here. So this front wave is actually going to travel and eventually come out the front right here. Okay, so this is pretty much where it escapes. So what does this look like on a graph? Again, you have your second order from the sealed section, right? We already know this is a second order and you have the third acoustical order, I mean, uh, the third energy storing component being the horn. So this is a third order enclosure, okay? Hopefully I didn't confuse anybody with that. I, I think that you guys get it. I think you get where I'm coming from with this and why and what constitutes this as a third order enclosure. But for right now, I'm going to cut this guy off right here. What I want you guys to do is to please leave comments in the sections below and we will discuss this further. I will do follow up um, um, uh, videos on you guys' comments after the series is completed. But for right now, just know that we have a whole lot more to talk about and I can't wait to see you guys' comments. But until then, that's it for now. It's your boy D and I'm out.